Hello and welcome to the Dark Side of the Moon, the last lab of the year, and the completion of the main ideas for the unit Earth and Beyond. So, let's see how we can do this. First of all, we want to go over our introduction. What are we investigating? What do you think? And what do you think we will learn? So, basically, this is really about the positions of the Sun and the Moon and the Earth and how we see them uh, from here on Earth. Main things like eclipses, moon phases, and day, night, year, etc. So we're going to take a, um, a quick overview. The introduction in this case is going to be worth 20 points. The Just like normal. The visual this time is going to be worth uh, 30 points because the procedures are not going to be written or drawn up and the conclusion uh, as usual worth 50 so again the write-up is going to be the same 100 points but the visual significantly more important and using the model also important so started with the question as always how uh, does everyone on earth see the same solar and lunar eclipse and moon phase and this is the key here at the same time. So yes, we can see the solar and lunar eclipses, we can see the moon faces, but the question is, can we do it at the same time? So uh, our hypothesis, if I do this, something with the model, so what could we do with the model? Then this will happen, we'll, we'll create some uh, some some part of the activity that uh, we can help to show that people do or do not see this and because of this reason and uh, the basic critical concept three of the best fit for this lab uh, really we're not really talking too much about telescopes or the evolution of the idea but we are looking at uh, rotation revolution tilt moon phases, eclipses, and the role and characteristics of the sun. So when we went over this in class, I said these are the main ideas. The role of the sun, solar lunar eclipses, and movement of the sun, moon, and earth. So you should have had a pretty good idea of how to complete that introduction. In the procedures, we'll just go over how that's done, but basically we always try to briefly but accurately describe how this activity was done so the fifth grader could repeat it. You give a basic summary of the materials we used. In this case, it was a model as well as the visual section, and the visual looked a bit like this. So in this case, we had the ability to... Um, just have the Earth, the Moon, and the Sun, and we uh, the Sun is obviously a long ways away, so 93 million miles away from the Earth. The Earth is here, moving around the Sun, and the Moon moving around the Earth. So the question was, how do we here on Earth see this Moon as it moves from the beginning of the month, or the month, as I uh, recently learned, to the end of the month. So the beginning of the month, first quarter, full moon, third quarter, new moon. How do, how do we use our models to show that? So on the board, you are supposed to line this up and say, okay, if I'm here, so you take a view from over here, Right, you have to get your eye down using the model. It's much easier if you use the model and say, okay, if I'm here looking at there, then all I'm seeing is the dark side of the moon. You grab this one, you put it up here, and you write in the phase, which is the new moon. All right? So then you proceed, and my suggestion is to take the moon and put it over here. You're here looking there and all you see is the lit side so you cut out and move that there and you call that the full moon. Okay, then the new moon, full moon and then you go around and again you literally move this. If I'm here, the right side lit, the left side dark, exactly half and half. So where do I see the right side lit, 
the dark side. And then you go to here. Well, it's still the right side, but it's not very lit over here. So the light side is still lit over here. Then you have to, and this is where it's good to have the model, because you turn around and you look down. If I'm here, the right side is dark and the left side is lit. Right side dark, left side lit. Again, you have to turn yourselves upside down. And so this one would be right side dark, left side lit. This is about half and half. And this is less than half. So again, when we're naming these, everything over here, everything on this side, up and down, will be and over here will be everything up here is sorry, and everything down here is so New moon, full moon, first quarter, third quarter, waxing crescent, waxing gibbous, waning crescent, oops, waning crescent, waning gibbous, and that is a month. This is the only place where a solar eclipse can occur. So that drawing looks a little bit like this with the shadow here. And this is the only place where a lunar eclipse can occur. And that is going to look a lot like that, just like the ones drawn in the practice problems. So who can see this? Well, the only people who can see a solar eclipse are the people in the shadow of the eclipse. So only the people on the daytime side uh, in the shadow. If you're here, you can't see it. A lunar eclipse, however, everybody on the nighttime side can see, every single person. But no matter what, you're not going to be able to see a lunar uh, and a solar eclipse at the same time because the moon can't be in two places at one time. So this was the entire visual section, as you can see. Lots of information, therefore, 30 points. In the conclusion, were we right or wrong? Well, no. You cannot see a solar and lunar eclipse at the same time. That wouldn't mean that there'd be two moons and there's just one. So you refer back to your visual section and then you start talking about how a revolution is the movement of the Earth around the Sun, the movement of the Moon around the Earth. So a complete revolution, a rotation, is a spin on the axis, uh, which causes day and night. Revolution equals year. Rotation equals day. 24 hours, 365 and one quarter days, and 24 hours. Then we go to the tilt. Notice that the tilt of the Earth is always the same, and it's always pointing up here at Polaris or the North Star. The North Star is quite a long ways away, but it's always tilted that way, and so how the sun's energy hits us causes the seasons. Obviously, the more direct, the more energy. The less direct, the less energy. So it's usually warmer here at the equator and colder as you go up to the poles, either north or south. Um, so in this case, you really just have to stop, look, decide which direction is the tilt, which area is being hit more. And so this is summer and this is winter. This is, if this is um, winter, then this must be fall. Other word is vernal. That means that this is summer in the north, but winter in the south. 
and last this is winter I'm mean, sorry winter to summer or summer to winter makes this the fall or the spring depending on which hemisphere you're in just have to stop slow down look um, the interesting thing is if you really look at how the Sun's energy comes at the earth then when you see the tilt it's it's pretty obvious when the Sun when the earth is tilted away from the Sun so that the southern hemisphere is being uh, most directly hit by the Sun it's about 65 percent day 35 percent night that's gonna make this much warmer because look how much more sunlight there is over here 65 percent night 35 this is gonna be cooler and and that's why we have winter in the north right way more daylight hours when you have that tilt towards the Sun way fewer daylight hours when you're tilted away from the Sun the moon phases we went over pretty completely but again you just have to slow down and think we are on earth what do you see when you're looking there what do you see when you're looking there what do you see you have to take yourself out of your perspective and make yourself right there right there that tiny little person as a model on earth looking at that and then pick the right way that the moon looks in its face uh, eclipses are always fun the moon blocking the sun's light causing a shadow on the earth is a solar eclipse the earth blocking the light so you can't see the moon is a lunar eclipse and finally the role of the Sun in the solar system well there's three big things one it holds all the planets of the solar system in orbit two because of gravity but look at there's Pluto there's Earth look how much bigger the Sun is and therefore how much more gravity and last it provides us with an un imaginable amount of energy this is a gigantic nuclear reaction going on that energy allows life to happen it allows weather to happen it allows the movement of the air and it keeps us alive uh, it heats the the um, the earth it heats the water and without the Sun uh, we wouldn't have life on earth as we know it at least and that is my 13 minute overview. It was a big lab, it's the last lab. Thank you, hope you learned something.